In the summer of 1916, a series of shark attacks terrorized the New Jersey shore, leaving four people dead and at least two injured. The attacks, which took place over a period of just 12 days, sent shockwaves through the nation and forever changed the way people thought about sharks. They went from simply fish in the sea to intimidating predators. This strange group of attacks is not just rare, nothing like it has ever been experienced again. It even influenced a writer who penned a little known book called Jaws. This is a study of strange. Welcome to A Study of Strange. I'm Michael, the guide into the strange and mysterious and macabre and unusual and the weird. And if you're new to the show, what I normally do is share a strange story from history to a guest that doesn't really know much about the topic. And today, returning to the show for the second slash third time is Amy Schlerb. And I say second slash third third because you were in my my pilot that I have not aired. Your pilot so. episode that was for my ears only. But, no, actually, I didn't even hear it either. It was just no, it's just ears. for my ears only. Uh, Amy is my wife. Sp- what? Spo- not spoiler alert, but uh, <laughs> you know, just so people people listening understand why it might get a little wacky today. So yeah, Amy recorded my pilot episode with me when I was testing out the idea for the show. We covered Bermeja Island, the missing island in the Gulf of Mexico that uh, people that like the content of my show may have heard of before. By the way, it's, it's, uh, it never existed and it was all kind of became an online internet mystery because of politicians in Mexico. So um, there you go. The more you know. That's wow. This is like the third episode in a row. I've I got a reference to the more you know. That's oh. really interesting. So today, Amy, we are covering a very somewhat famous story from strange history, and it involves sharks. Sharks. And I. And what m- listeners, if they haven't listened to the episode you've been on before. As much as I love strange things, scary things, the unusual, and diving into all of that, Amy, my wife, does not. She doesn't like any of that. I don't like anything unusual. I don't like anything strange. I don't like anything scary. I like to know everything ahead of time. (laughs) (laughs) That is right. But you have seen Jaws. For someone that does not watch any scary movies, you have seen Jaws. I have seen Jaws, yes. Do you like it? I do like Jaws. I think Jaws. I think Jaws is like two different movies, though. There's the first part of the movie before you see the shark, and then there's the second part of the movie where you see the shark and you're like, "This is no longer scary. It's kind of silly." And yeah, yeah, all right. right. That's my feeling on Jaws. Sure, I love Jaws. It's one of my favorite movies. And what's interesting about today's story is this is what inspired Peter Benchley to write Jaws. Ooh. Maybe maybe try a bigger reaction for the audience. You know, oh my the goodness. There we go. There we go. Yeah, see? Everybody. The inspiration for Jaws? Yeah. Yeah. So, the this movie? Is, well, it was a book first, but then it then it was a movie. The book and then the movie? Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. Amy is an actor, everybody. You can find her at amyschlerb.com uh, or amyschlerbactor.com. No- just amyschlerb.com. <laughs> yep, there you go. I take notes well. I take direction. If you need something bigger, I can do it bigger. <laughs> I wanted to tell this story because it has intrigued me for a very long time. And I wanted to dive into it and find out, you know, the things I like to do. What's real? What's not real? What do we actually know? Where has it gone astray? Astray? Astride? Astray? I think it's astray. astray. And yes, in the sort of the way that these historical strange stories go. And we're going to begin our tale in the summer of 1916. And it's important to note here that the United States was 
it was on the cusp of change, I would say, which because we had World War One was raging in Europe, the Great War at the time. You had the the there were epidemics just kind of like the COVID of its time with the Spanish flu going around the world. You had industrialization happening. But on the picturesque beaches of New Jersey, troubles like that were far and far out of everybody's mind because everybody just wanted to enjoy the beach, the Jersey shores, if the you Jersey will. The Jersey shore. We got to go to the beach with our hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yes. And, and just like today or reality television would have you believe, the Jersey Shore is still a common getaway to for, for vacationers, people in the summer times. Famously, um, um, oh God, I, I feel terrible. The, the former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, Christie? was found and when they had like... Where? Yeah, he was sitting in the beach yeah. chair when no one was supposed to be on the beach. You know, people like the Jersey Shore. And families went there to, you know, for reasons that people still go to the beaches on vacations. It's enjoyable. Smiling at me like like there's innuendo there. <laughs> no, no, no. I was smiling at me yeah. because I started yeah. on a sentence and I didn't know where I wanted it to lead. Oh, okay. And were- uh Smiling at me like, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> no, no, no. I was uh, trying to say something, but I didn't know what I wanted to say. So I was like, oh, let's see if I can dig myself out of what I started here. So let me give some background to this story. First of all, they, there's no secret to it. There were four deaths and five. Typically, it said that there were five attacks total and four deaths. There were actually six attacks, which I'll get into. And let me give you a paint a little picture of this. On July 1st, 1916, a day like any other in the resort town of Beach Haven this time of year, vacationers were up and down the beach, splashing in the waves, building sandcastles, basking in the sun. It was the day, it was the days before sunscreen. So hopefully everyone had umbrellas and hats and things to cover up their skin. But for one young man, Charles Van Zant, this day would be his last. Van Zant was a 25-year-old from Philadelphia. He was on vacation with his family. He was a strong swimmer, known for being very athletic. But as he took a late afternoon swim with his dog, which is important to note, something struck Charles Van Zandt, and witnesses described a horrific scene, a violent struggle, the water was turning red with blood, and Van Zandt was desperately yelling for help. Two men, Alexander Ott and Sheridan Taylor, not Taylor Sheridan. Not Taylor Sheridan, okay. (laughs) Yeah, yep. uh, Tried to pull Van Zandt to shore, and they noticed that a shark was following them as they were pulling his body back to shore, stalking them back to shore. Where's the dog? What happened to the dog? You know, I'd never found out. I think he survived. (gasps) I'm I'm gonna assume that the dog actually made it and the shark aimed for the human or the human got in the way and and Van Zandt was hit. So he was pulled, pulled to shore. They rushed him to the Angleside Hotel. He was placed on the hotel manager's desk, bleeding out as they were sort of hurriedly trying to do anything to save this man. Despite immediate medical attention, Charles Van Zandt bled to death on the hotel manager's desk. That was attack numero uno. Wow. Yes. Why is that scene in the movie? And Jaws? Yeah, I feel like that that would have been good. Well, this isn't the Jaws story. This just inspired the story. So it's not it's not like Jaws. There are similarities, which we will dive into later on, typically dealing with the panic that happens in Jaws after the first attack. Yes. And what's different about this, and honestly, quite frankly, scarier about the New Jersey shark attacks is more people <laughs> were attacked in real life than in Jaws. Because most of that story is them out hunting for it, right? Whereas this was a a group of people, as I said, six people attacked, four people dead over a period of 12 days in one basic area. Yeah. Now, just five days later, like 40-ish miles north in Spring Lake, New Jersey, another tragedy struck. Charles Bruder, a 27-year-old bellhop at the Essex 
and Sussex Hotel, he decided to take a swim during his break. And as he was swimming, lifeguards heard screams. They rushed to his aid only to find that the sea around him was red with blood. I even read an account, I think it was Bruder, where a woman thought a red canoe had tipped over. Yikes. But it wasn't a canoe, it was a bloody body. Now, Bruder had suffered catastrophic injuries to his legs. Like Van Zant, he too succumbed to his wounds relatively quickly. So this is two attacks, both fatal, both by a creature lurking in the depths of the sea. And the public was stunned. Now, sharks obviously were known creatures. People knew what we sharks knew were back then. back then. We know we know about sharks, but they weren't known as like the vicious predators that a lot of us think of today uh, of sharks. A lot of even scientists at the time thought that they were not even a danger at all to humans. And I know scientists today are still like, you're safe around sharks. Just obviously be smart about it. But back then it was even more like, oh, they're just fishies in a, you know, an aquarium. It's the same thing. You're fine. They're just fish. They're just fish. Large fish with sharp pointy teeth. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to wrap my head head around to understand how different the perspective was of sharks at the time. And it, it also was thought that sharks couldn't bite into human bone. Because they actually don't have as strong of, of a bite as like, let's say, alligators or crocodiles. So it was right. thought that they couldn't break bone. But okay. yeah, the big ones, the big ones kind of can. Now, but the horror after this second death was far from over. In fact, there wasn't even really a panic yet. Like there was some concern, but this is so rare. This is unheard of. Stories hadn't spread. You know, the news hadn't spread around quite as much. But it was a, a strange situation, and this all changed six days after Bruder's death. The shark, or per, per, the shark, or perhaps others like it, struck again. This time, the setting was the freshwater, brackish Matawan Creek, some 30 miles from Spring Lake, and it heads inland for a mile or so. But uh, sharks don't swim in brackish waters, do they? Well, freshwater. Are there freshwater sharks? Uh, there are some some sharks that I think swim in the Amazon. Um, bull sharks, which we will get into as a potential theory for what kind of creature did this. Bull bull sharks are known to be in brackish waters. What's yes. brackish waters? It's a mix. It's like freshwater and salt water kind of getting together for a holiday. Okay, you just threw that out there like I'm supposed to know this. Stuff. You're a smart person. I thought you would. I didn't know what brackish water was. I'm glad you asked them because I, I just assumed like everybody did. Choppy. No, 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 no. No, it's it's like fresh water and salt water kind of mixes. The, the salinity is less so than in the ocean. That's the, the important more thing. more you know. And I am not a scientist, if you cannot tell listeners. So if I'm wrong, send me a message. A study of strange at gmail.com. But I do know it's it's less salinity. I could be wrong about the mixing of the, the things, but it's less salinity. So there's a gentleman named Thomas Cottrell. I don't know if I'm saying that right. He was a retired ship captain. And he witnessed an enormous dark form moving with the tide toward the old Matawan docks on the creek. And he knew that sharks don't swim, or at least thought sharks don't swim in brackish water like the Matawan Creek. But he remembered that there were these recent attacks along the coast. And he thought, oh, I should warn people. But because no one had ever heard of sharks swimming in the creek, no one was afraid of sharks at the time. His, his sighting didn't actually do anything to help or prevent what was about to happen. On July 12th, local boys, including 11-year-old Lester Stillwell, were playing and swimming in Matawan Creek. And suddenly, a shark described as enormous by some people later on attacked Stillwell, pulling him under the water. There was shock, confusion. And this also, you can just imagine something like this happening around you. It happens so fast that it's kind of hard for people to even describe because it's in like the blink of an eye. You go from happy fun splashing in water to suddenly whoa, blood screaming water. blood. Yeah. So it, it's got to be terrifying. Now, a local tailor, Stanley Fisher, heroically jumped in to rescue the boy, 
along with 51-year-old Arthur Smith and a 20-year-old named George Burlew. They, uh, some accounts say that they dove into the water. I actually, the a lot of the accounts directly from the time talk about a rowboat. I think they got in a rowboat and went out over the water and then jumped in. Um, I don't know if I that's semantics or not. But Sorry, say that again? I would hit the shark with the oars. I wouldn't necessarily jump in with it. But they're trying to save an 11-year-old boy. Sure, you got to jump in to save him. What? Well, you hit the shark though on the way. Well, yeah, but you you can't necessarily see it because the water there is murky. Right. You can't see in. It's <laughs> thank you, but it is murky, so it's dark. It's hard to see. So they're just trying to find the body of the boy. I don't even think they necessarily knew it was a shark, as you'll oh, find okay. a lot of people even debated it at the time. So here's I'm going to have you read a quote from. The Ashbury Park Press from Neptune, New Jersey. And this is written, I think it's a Jerry Carino was the was the person who wrote this article. But this is about Arthur Smith, who was one of the people trying to save Lester uh, Stillwell. You can go ahead. His grandmother, then 16 year old Mabel Smith, was playing in Matawan Creek in Mammoth County, New Jersey on July 12th, 1916. All of this has already been previously stated by Michael May on this podcast. When the shark attacked 11-year-old Lester Stilwell, she remembered the shark grabbing him by the stomach, Crawford said. He came up from the water once and the screams were horrific. Other kids at the creek raced off to get help. Mabel didn't have to go far. The creek ran behind the sprawling property owned by her father, 51-year-old farmer and carpenter Arthur Smith. Within minutes, Arthur Smith plunged into the creek and plunged into the creek to look for Lester. He was joined by 24-year-old Stanley Fisher and 20-year-old George Burlew, all of whom were braver than Amy Schlerb. <laughs> yes, they were very brave. I will point out again, they didn't know exactly what was happening. They just th- thought a little boy was hurt and something's going on. Fisher found Lester Stilwell's body and he started to drag it either up to the robot or to shore, depending on, on which articles you read. Um, but then he too got bit and he lost Stilwell's body as he's being attacked, but they are able to pull him out and take Fisher to the hospital, but he did pass away. He lost, you know, too much blood and, um, it that was happens, very terrible. Sure. So yes, I, I'm going to read a little bit more of an article uh, which is people people commenting on uh, the grandmother that had actually witnessed it at the time. My grandmother said the water was just solid red, Crawford said. They dragged Fisher onto the shore and you could see the bones in his leg. Friends Ooh. tried to bandage the wound, but Fisher would bleed to death later that day. Meanwhile, as Crawford tells it, the shark headed for Arthur Smith. He got into the rowboat just in time, but not before suffering a laceration that required 14 stitches. The injury is corroborated by other published reports. He had that scar until he passed away, Crawford said. So the reason I wanted to include that bit of information is not just that, you know, it's part of the story, but almost everything I read of the New Jersey shark attacks is that five people were attacked, four deaths. Arthur Smith, him getting this laceration on his leg, that's actually six attacks. And I, I feel like his his injury is yeah. is kind of just forgotten over time by because most it, people. It's lumped in with the Lester's attack. I, I guess so. I, I don't know how that happened, but that that just that's what happens with strange stories. And one of my fascination is like finding the, you know, the things that clarify mm-hmm. information that gets sort of telephoned over the years. So Arthur Smith got injured as well, not just Lester, the the 11 year old or um, uh, Stanley Fisher, who who died trying to rescue the kid. As if this weren't enough. Just a half hour. Yes, thank you. Dun, dun, dun. Just a half hour later, downstream from the previous attack, 14 year old Joseph Dunn was bitten on his leg. So they're further downstream. All this just happened a half hour ago, but they're far enough away that like they don't really they didn't hear the stories. They don't know if someone was killed and 
a boy disappeared and all of that. They so it's on other Instagram live for it. No, no, people weren't on the Twitter or anything finding out. So it was a group of people playing in the in the river just further down, or in the creek, I should say, further down. So Joseph Dunn, fourteen years old again, his friend and brother um, apparently tried to save Joseph, and they were able to get a hold of him. They pulled him away from the shark, and Joseph Dunn. He is the lucky survivor, like main, like a big attack, survived it. He did not pass away. That is sort of the end of the attacks. Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll wrap it up and say that's the end of all the attacks, all the deaths. However, it's not the end of the story because two days after all of this, Lester Stillwell, the 11 year old who was attacked in the creek, his body was finally found. And it oh. wasn't very far away from where he was attacked, but it was, I don't know, half mile. I'm just guessing that number. I've seen videos online where people can like be at the attack point, sort of point down the river to where he was found, but he was found down the river. And obviously he had, he had died from some kind of vicious attack in the water. And then the panic begins. Pre people freak I feel like out. The panic should have already started. Oh no, the panic is I should I shouldn't say it, it didn't start when they found the body. They started after that day when all those people were attacked in the river right around the same time. That's when the panic begins. And I think finding Lester's body just adds fuel to the fire of kind of mob mentality. This is very much mob mentality at the time. Yeah. And I literally always imagine like pitchforks from like Frankenstein movies of people storming the castle. This is very similar because if people had pitchforks in New Jersey at the time, they would have been stabbing the river because <laughs> people came out with guns, with dynamite, and there's reports and comments and all this kind of stuff from people claiming that they should kill all the sharks. All sharks should die. Let's blow them all up. Blow up the whole ocean. We never want this to happen again. Kill all uh, the sharks. Kill all the sharks. That's what it sounds like in Jersey. Forget yeah, about it. Kill yeah. all the sharks. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, now, some press, they were ichthyologists, which, you know, are people that study fish. And Oh, I science... knew that. Thank you, though, for- Oh, you did? For I, 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 I did not know that. Thank you, but yes, I was going to- I knew, like, my friend David, shout out to David Harding. <laughs> David wanted to be uh, become an ichthyologist when we were kids for a little while. That's the only reason I know what that is. But, but you know, scientists and-, and people tried to calm down the mob and there were articles, reports and, and announcements and press releases, politicians trying to calm people down, scientists trying to calm people down. It's not really working. And the former director of the Philadelphia Aquarium, James M. Meehan, was called into one of these press situations to try to calm the public down. And he specifically tried to de-emphasize the threat of sharks and what the, the threat of sharks was to humans and everybody should be fine on the beach. And we're going to read a scene, a little recreation of oh, Meehan talking to uh, the, the public at a press release. A press release? And, or a, it's a press conference. 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 Okay. Press conference. And I think you should read... Politician one. There's a lot. There's more, way more parts in this than most of my recreation scenes. So I think you should be politician one, Meehan, and Quint. Okay. On it. A crowd has gathered in a large room. Everyone speaking over everyone else. A lot of hubbub. And at the head of the room are politicians, a scientist, and James M. Meehan from the Philadelphia Aquarium. Calm down, please. You will all get a chance to ask your questions. Sharks are coming for us. Uh, oh, oh, read, read person two, too. I'll have to shut down my business if people don't come to the beach. Please, we have Dr. Meehan from the aquarium here. He knows about sharks, right, Doc? Yeah, it's just... <laughs> I realized maybe I should have been apologizing. That's all right. Too late now. We're in it. <laughs> well, it's, it's just Mr. But yes, I do know about sharks. Look, there's nothing to worry about. 
The hell there is! A shark broke into my house and tried to eat, eat me! Kill them all! Kill them all! I don't think that's wise. Despite the death of Charles Van Zandt, and the report of two sharks having been caught in that vicinity recently, I do not believe there is any reason why people should hesitate to go swimming at the beaches for fear of man-eaters. I hardly believe... <coughs> excuse me... <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> that Van Sant was bitten by a man-eater. Van Sant was in the was in the surf playing with a dog, and it may have been a small shark that that drifted in the high water uh, and was marooned by the tide. Being unable to move quickly and without food, he had come in to bite the dog and snapped at the man in passing. All the more reason to kill them. Kill them all! Suddenly there's screeching fingers on a chalkboard at the back of the room, which I'm not going to add in that sound effect because it's terrifying and terrible. The room shushes. Everyone turns to face a weathered old sea captain. You all know me. No, I earn a living. I'll catch this bird for you, but it ain't going to be easy. Bad fish. Not like going down to the pond and chasing bluegills and tommy cocks. This shark swallow your whole. And we gotta be, we gotta do it quick. That'll bring back your tourists. Put all your businesses on a paying basis. But it's not gonna be that pleasant. I value my neck a lot more than 3,000 bucks, chief. Chief? I'll find him for three, but I'll catch him and kill him for ten. For that, you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. Anyway, we delivered the bomb. Bomb? Uh, we aren't offering money, sir. Why, why don't we all just grab our guns, dynamite, and pitchforks, or blow the whole damn creek up? Yes, let's do it! Yay, let's do it! Farewell, you do to you, Spanish ladies. Fair, Spanish ladies. Uh, I will be... Very honest to the listeners that hey. Amy basically just wanted to do this episode to to be Quint, so I had to add him to that recreation scene. Yep. I'm um, out. I'm done with this podcast now. <laughs> now she's now she's done. Now, uh, yeah, obviously, I kind of combined things with Jaws there with the captain offering help. But it, the reality isn't far different because you had a bunch of these communities, a bunch, a bunch of different mayors and city councils and and sort of community leaders all trying to figure out what to do up and down New Jersey. And there wasn't a Quint Seaman, you know, who was in World War Two, who was going to, you know, go out and hunt a great white shark. But there were just a bunch of people saying, let's blow everything up. The ocean, we should dry up the ocean, set it on fire. That's how you get rid of these sharks that are killing everybody. And thank goodness they weren't able to succeed in that. Nevertheless, there was panic. Beaches were deserted. Shark hunts were organized. The New York Zoological Society offered a reward to capture man-eating sharks. And... Yeah, the, the summer retreat along New Jersey coasts turned into a nightmare. And in the Matawan area, people, I keep mentioning dynamite, they literally were throwing dynamite into the creek, just trying to kill any anything. Anything. And, yeah, anything. And now two days after the attacks, a man did catch a great white in the bay near the Matawan Creek. And this is interesting because the shark had human remains inside of it. Oh, there are some reports that did that debate or throw some skepticism on the on if it was human remains, but some reports did say it was human remains. What's interesting about this is that shark was, you know, Jaws in the movies. I think they claimed that Jaws was 30 feet long, which is bigger than great whites can actually get. High, another yeah. measurement as well. <laughs> Other measurements that you might know. Um, but the shark that that this guy caught that everybody was excited about. You can read it in newspaper articles and everything from the time. The shark was only seven and a half feet long. It was not yeah, a right huge there. shark. Now that's plenty big to kill somebody. Um, but it was only seven and a half feet long. Bounties were offered just like it in Jaws. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, say that again. 
It's like a Wim Bam Yama size shark. <laughs> <laughs> a Wimby shark, yes. Uh, Congress, the Congress of the United States of America put money into a budget to eradicate sharks because of this. The president, which I think was Hoover, was it Hoover? I think it was Hoover. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, he he had meetings on the issue. He had meetings about New shark Jersey movie. and the shark attacks. And what I find really fascinating, because I did not know this until I started researching this story. This is the first recorded shark attacks on humans in history are the New Jersey oh. shark attacks. Obviously, they had probably happened before. But it's the first time during record keeping of shark attacks. This is the start of it all. That said, there's no type of evidence about what kind of sharks caused these attacks. We don't know if it was one shark, a lone shark, a group of sharks. We also don't even have 100% proof it was sharks. And that's where we're shifting the topic of this podcast now to talk about various theories and things that may have happened. So why are these attacks so strange, so unexpected? For tar for starters, shark attacks were incredibly rare. They still are. They still are. People out there scared of the ocean. Shark attacks are rare. I'm from Florida. They're very shark rare. They're very rare. Um, and they, But they typically don't happen in the northeastern United States. They typically happen where I'm from. In Florida or South Africa. These are like a couple of the big, th big places. Everything happens in Florida. Very true. Furthermore, the notion of sharks entering a sort of brack brackish water creek like the Matawan Creek was almost unheard of. Low and sodium water. <laughs> low sodium water? Is that what low you said? Sodium, lower sodium <laughs> water. It's healthier for you. Oh, oh, I see. Um, so there's theories, there's tons of theories about what drove these attacks or who did it, and I'm going to cover some of them. So some speculate that this is a single rogue shark was responsible. Ha happened, you just happened to be swimming You're up the coast. Killer shark. Yes, and others suggest that it's a series of sharks acting independently. That it wasn't one shark that did all these. There were also thoughts at the time. World War One going on. There are U-boats out in the Atlantic, so there's some that blame Germans <laughs> on on disturbing wildlife, causing sharks to act in a frenzy. Not to blame everything on the Germans, but uh, that is that is a thought and a theory that All has been out there. Be that that U-boats attacked people. <laughs> <laughs> no, they and bit them. U-boats had a way to bite them. people. No, no, no. But there is thought like there are, there are submarines, there's war activities going on. It is disturbing wildlife, which I kind of get. I don't know if that would lead to shark attacks. Yeah. However, considering that millions of people who have been in the water during, you know, all of human existence, we only have two or three cases where Sharks acted as rogues. This is the rogue, rogue. Sorry, I shifted into my rogue shark theory here. It doesn't really happen. There are scientists that have talked about the rogue shark theory that there's one shark, kind of like in the movie Jaws, there's just one okay. shark out doing all this. That apparently scientifically doesn't have a lot of merit. Uh, so there is a potential that this was not just one shark. There's a coincidental nature to this story. And even if one shark attacks multiple times, according to scientists, it could still be part of a larger pattern of groups of sharks. So, yeah, I would find it highly unlikely that it was. I mean, I'm no ichthyologist, but <laughs> I, would find it, I would find it very unlikely that it was one shark. That's that's Hollywood. That is Harley. That, that is that is Hollywood. The Hollywood yeah. story. That's like, oh, really? We need we need a new uh, something for our Sunday lineup on HBO, and so we're gonna do Dexter. But it's a shark. But it's a shark. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I would watch it, that so it much. Only eats awful people. Yeah. So here, I'm gonna do a fun one for you. Here is a theory. 
proposed from a, a gentleman named Barrett P. Smith from New York, from Long Island. And he wrote oh, in Island. at the time. Here's a quote from from Barrett P. Smith. Having read much. Having I'm, I'm trying to think, do I do an accent? No, I'm not going to ruin Island. it. <laughs> having read with I much. Say the Long Island accent is, is Long, Long Island. Island. Yeah. <laughs> Having read with much interest the account of the fatality of Spring Lake, New Jersey, I should like to offer a suggestion somewhat of at variance with the shark theory. Scientists believe it most unlikely that a shark was responsible, and lots of people, though, though believe it much more likely that the shark attack was made by a sea turtle. Scientists have spent much time at sea and along shore and have several times seen turtles large enough to inflict just such wounds. These creatures are of vicious disposition, and when annoyed, are extremely dangerous to approach, and it is a common theory that Bruder may have disturbed one while he was asleep, or while it was asleep, or close to the surface. I would hope he wasn't asleep while he was swimming. Just swimming, yeah, yeah. No, the turtle may have been asleep. I will say, from personal experience, from someone that loves the ocean and loves scuba diving and snorkeling, I have been around sea turtles in the water. I have been around... uh, a lot of them, you are typically told you are not allowed to touch them, depending on where you are. You're not allowed to approach them because they're endangered and you got to be careful of them. Stick straws up their nose. They you're not like allowed that. to do that. You can't like bring the plastic things that hold six cans of, of soda. You yeah. can't carry those with you and offer them to turtles. Nope. Um, no, you got to be very, they're, they're very delicate creatures. They're wonderful with some of my favorite animals. And what's interesting is having scuba dived around sea turtles before, I have been told explicitly not to worry about them. And if they come to you, they typically are just saying, get away and they will push you. And that's the only time you're allowed to touch them, depending on the sea turtles and where you are, is if they come and push you. And it's like, don't touch them back. Let them push you. Because if you touch them, that's you're you're arrested. You're <laughs> you're fine. I don't know. Something terrible can happen. But they will push you. So I I highly doubt. I know I'm very much generalizing. There are a lot of species of sea turtles, but I I don't believe this theory that it's a sea turtle. What about you? I don't believe it's a sea turtle. However, the whole brackish water thing. Uh, so in Vermont we would have uh, snapping turtles. We mm-hmm. had one that came up our front steps from some pond and like tried to get in our house. Um, but it was, it had a rather ah, 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 yeah, snappy yeah. jaw uh, and big talons and things. Yep, and yep. Mean. So like snap, like a snapping turtle of some kind, maybe, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of thing in the ocean that's like that. But the sea, tr- sea turtles are always so. so like they seem very docile. Yeah, and now now sea turtles feet? can be or not not sea turtles, but turtles like you said, snapping turtles, very aggressive, very strong bites. Very like yeah. as a kid. Oh, look, I'm from Florida. We used to catch snapping turtles and like put sticks in front of its face to see if it'll bite it and like all that kind of stuff. They can break through bone. There's in the south. There's the alligator snapping turtle, which everybody should be afraid of. Don't play with those things. They will take Maybe off an arm. Alligator snapping turtle. I think that's way too far north for oh. an alligator snapping turtle, uh, especially in the ocean and all of that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, if the beaches of the Jersey Shore are that nice, maybe the alligator snapping turtles and other were on vacation. Life from Florida were on yeah. vacation. And they were like, you know what? I'm a little hungry. I am going to see what Jersey yeah. Shore people taste like. Hairspray. Hair Trump, gel. Trump, Trump. Yeah. Uh, hey, new theory proposed on this podcast, a study of strange. This is going to break new ground in the story of the 1916 New Jersey shark attacks. Look, I don't I'm not saying I I don't have to believe it. It's still a new theory that's being proposed. So, there you go. Alligator snapping turtle. Next up on our theory on list. On you vacation, of course. Thing. Yeah. Alligator snapping turtle or some of on his vacation. brethren like real alligators from Florida on vacation in the Jersey Shore deciding yep. to get a quick bite to eat. Look, I've seen Lake Placid and Betty White in that movie. It it you I know. 
<laughs> you would actually, that's actually a, a quote unquote horror movie you would like. It's you always say that. very fun. You always no, say that. And you then would. At three in the morning, I'm going, wake up because I'm not sleeping. <laughs> wake up because Betty White is feeding alligators at your feet. No, it, you would actually like that movie. It's very fun. Um, okay, moving on. The the primary theory at the time was that it was a great white shark, especially because there was that seven and a half foot great white shark that, shark that was caught at the mouth of the Matawan Creek. Uh, great white sharks have been found in the area. This, of course, talking about great whites is probably what influenced Peter Benchley to write Jaws and have a great white shark be the culprit. Uh, I'm also going to read a couple of different things about great white sharks in the Northeast of the United States. Uh, they are there and attacks do happen. So in 2016, Mary Lee, a uh, nearly 1,590 kilograms great white shark. What is that? That's uh, oh, I have it written down already. I'm so smart. 3,500 pounds because we're we're Americans. We don't know kilograms, How even though stones? we should. Oh, I don't know. I haven't done that conversion yet. Uh, 12. I don't know. This, stones are strange. <laughs> That's it's always it's always like, you know, a car weighs two stone or something. People in the UK write in. Let me know. What is a stone compared to kilograms or pounds? A study of strange at gmail.com. So anyway, a great white shark was caught along the Jersey Shore. USA Today reported, this is a quote, after swimming off the coast at different times in 2000 or I think 2005, Mary Lee has returned to snack in the waters off Atlantic City. I feel like um, they gave her a very docile name. Mary like Lee. Very, like, Mary Lee. Yeah, she makes pastries and sells them in supermarkets. Uh, also, there was a swimmer killed by a great white shark in Maine in 2020. So this is 60-year-old Julie Dimperio Halawak. Halawak. Oh, man, I should have practiced that name before recording today. That's a lot of names. Yes, Julie Dimperio Halawak. Halawak. I'm going to say Halawak. Uh, she was swimming in Mackerel Cove off Bailey Island in Harpswell, Maine. There's a lot of names. I didn't realize when I put that. Down. <laughs> it's a lot of names of places and people. Um, she was swimming with her daughter and she was bitten by a great white shark. She did not survive. And a tooth fragment, the way they know it was a, a, a great white because there was a tooth fragment that was recovered from her body. I was about to ask, how did they know if, yeah. like, because, you know, they're not they, like, I feel like it's hard to know what bit you. Yes, it, it is. And so, yeah, tooth fragment was the the key to figuring that out. Um, I, mean, I got bit by a dog in the Bahamas on our honeymoon, and I only know it was a dog because we well, saw what it. Else would have been? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and we saw it. So, yes, if anybody goes to the Exumas in the Bahamas, just please note you're probably more likely to get bit by a dog than a bull shark. I named it Alfred Shark so that then I could tell people I was I was bit by yep. a shark. Nice, nice. In the Bahamas. I forgot about that. Yeah, you were bit by a shark. Mr. Yeah. Alfred Mr. Shark, the a canine. Shark. So the, the reason great whites are not the like, hey, it was definitely a great white, is because of the creek, Matawan Creek being brackish waters. Uh, there's great white sharks do not swim in brackish water. They can't. So that is one of the things holding us back. There is somebody that did a, a report and I did not write down who they were. Um, but there, there has been a report that a great white could swim up Matawan Creek Creek. The salinity is enough for them to survive for a little while which actually does kind of fit. Hey, it was one day where some attacks happened. However, how, yes, exactly. A vacation going up a Creek instead of staying in the water. However, it, again, there's still some doubt that it was a great white because of the brackish waters, which leads us to one of the main culprits. My personal theory, I have seen some, you know, shark week documentaries about this as well related to the 1916 New Jersey shark attacks. And that is the bull shark. And bull sharks are the most dangerous shark in the waters. Not just my opinion, but they I think they attack more people than anybody else. They are strong. They're aggressive, um, not typically aggressive towards humans, but they are a dangerous 
if not the most dangerous shark species. I have also caught a bull shark. And oh. yes, I have. And it's an it's an awesome with story. Your leg? Not with my leg, thank goodness. No, I was actually tarpon fishing off the coast of uh, Boca Grande on the Gulf Coast of Florida when I was like 18 or 19. My mom used to tarpon fish all the time, and I went out for my birthday to tarpon fish with her. And we I hooked a tarpon. Tarpon are very strong fish. And it takes a lot, it takes a lot of energy to fight those guys. But I'm strong. And after a very long time of fighting this fish, my arm being already very tired from fighting a tarpon, I get it nearly to the boat, maybe five to ten feet away from the boat. And then suddenly there's a giant splash. And my line starts going just like in Jaws, like the line just goes <laughs> and it's like zooming out. Uh, I end up fighting whatever is on the line at that point. The, the the captain of the boat knew it was a shark. He like saw he saw enough of it to know it was a shark and probably a bull shark. And I thought that was like, well, I don't want to let the shark go. The shark just I just caught a tarpon and a shark on the same hook. The tarpon became my bait for the shark. It was pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. And uh, I decided to fight the bull shark because I was like, well, I want to catch a shark now because this is an amazing story. And I fight the shark for a very, very long time, but they're very strong. And I was already worn out from the tarpon. And eventually we just had to, I think it broke the line. I don't think we cut the line. I think it broke the line eventually, but it it was a bull shark. And we did get it close to the boat uh, a few times. And they are nasty, nasty, meaning sort of dangerous sharks. And they're not usually aggressive towards humans, as I've already said, but they are known to attack when they feel threatened, like any other wild animal. Although I'd much rather be around a lot of other wild animals than bull sharks. In addition to being the most dangerous shark in the world, they have a unique ability to survive in saltwater and freshwater. Bam, bam, and brackish water. Yes, because they can they can go in between the two. So, yes. It'd be awkward <laughs> if they could only survive in fresh or salts, but not brackish. Not brackish, not, yeah. Not that would be very odd. Water. Yeah, and I can't remember. I didn't even think of, to, to look it up until you said it earlier in this recording about like freshwater sharks, but I'm pretty sure the sharks that are found in freshwater rivers and tributaries are bull sharks. Um so again, let, write in to let me know. Correct me, a study of strange at gmail.com. So that if it was a shark that attacked these kids in the creek, it would have had to swim from salt water into brackish water up this creek. And that is what makes me think if it was a shark, and there are plenty of witnesses that say they think they saw a dorsal fin, which is, you know, the not a sea turtle. They do not have dorsal fins. Unless they're yeah. in disguise. Unless they're in disguise, which is possible. Uh, that I do think this is a bull shark. That is just my personal theory. But that is the first recorded attacks on humans from sharks. And that event, that group of attacks over 12 days, again, four people died in that short amount of time in New Jersey. That is what started the public perception that sharks are to be feared. That is the whole model. We always think of Jaws. Jaws made everybody fear the ocean. It's not Jaws. It actually started in 1916 and inspired Jaws. People were terrified of sharks and wanted to blow them up with dynamite to to kill them all. I will say just uh, I now feel like I should be somewhat protective of the environment and ecosystems do not be afraid of sharks i have swam with sharks amy has swam with sharks do not be afraid of sharks don't bother them don't encroach on their territory be nice to sharks but we need them for the earth to survive so please do not go throw dining dynamite all over the ocean (laughs) please i was going to say dining room tables but you said dynamite it's dynamite dynamite don't throw dynamite or dining room tables at sharks Exactly. Neither of these exactly. Things. So do you have any final thoughts, Amy, before we finish today? Watch Shark Week. Yes. Yeah, it's great. Because that is always good for feeling better about sharks. Uh, and also just respecting and seeing how awesome and cool they are and how powerful and, 
and things, but also just realizing like, oh, these are just creatures and they have no malice toward you. I was watching something. Oh, of course it was Stargate universe. And, uh, (laughs) uh, (laughs) listeners, Amy has been binging every Stargate show for the last what like four months now i think that she's oh, been on a stargate all. yeah i just yeah. i just i love that show it's a, all of them uh every iteration and movie and everything <laughs> um nerd uh but no they they encounter some evil evil quote-unquote creature that's hunting them on to, on a planet and uh one of the you know fine canadians that it is from that galaxy uh, is saying, you know, well, creatures are better than humans because they don't, they're not killing for, you know, malice or hatred or, you know, to be evil or get revenge. They're doing it to survive and eat and that's it. They don't, yeah. they don't do it because they're mean. They do it because they're just trying to live. They're just, they're just trying to make a living. These sharks out there, when they attack humans, they're just trying to make a living. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, that's it. That's right. That's it. So please respect sharks. But it is a very strange story. This group, like I don't, and I was trying to find other groupings of shark attacks and I really couldn't. Like there were a couple things that popped up, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite the same. So this is just a very strange situation. And again, we don't have all the evidence there. There is a world where one or two of the, I do think sharks were involved with these attacks, but there's a world where maybe not all of them were actually a shark and could have been something else. Um, I think it's highly likely it was all sharks, but uh, there's, there, we don't know. We don't know. The point is we alligator don't have positive snapping turtles on vacation. alligator snapping turtles on vacation, but we just, I'm just trying to point out that we don't have a hundred percent proof that this was all sharks. So, yeah, strange times. 1916, New Jersey shark attacks. We presented a new theory tonight on a study of strange, and I'm very proud of that. Spread it around on the internet. Amy Schlerb thinks it was alligator snapping turtles on vacation. And, from Florida. Well, they exist. In a, well, you're they saying they're specifically theory. from Florida? My theory is that they were on vacation from Florida. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, yeah. Definitely You're going to quote my theory, get it right. Yeah, hashtag Florida. <laughs> so <laughs> that'll do it for A Study of Strange tonight. Thank you all for listening and uh, hopefully enjoying this content. Before we go, Amy, do you want people to come find you anywhere? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing to promote today, huh? No, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on Instagram. And Amy Schlerb. Uh, I have a website, amyschlerb.com, A M Y S C H L O E R B. You can find me. I I do things. And just don't. You made it sound like they were going to come and find me. No, no, no. I mean, like promotion. You got to promote like yourself. Or yeah. something. You have your work, you're a performer, and, and also a coach, and you know, you have things yeah. out there. And I can yeah. provide links in the show notes and everybody should look you right. up. Cool. Well, thank thank you for coming on. I did think you were a good person to have on this because I wanted to allude to Jaws and I know that you've I actually seen that movie. I know you wanted to do Quint, so I Wait. appreciate you taking the time to do this. We and deliver, um, we deliver the bomb. I can't no, do it either. No, you, you're not no, so good no. at it. Uh, and now, uh, on a personal note, you and I have to figure out what we're doing for dinner tonight with our family. Anyway, we're going to have some food. Thank you for listening to A Study of Strange. Before you go, take a quick second to hit that subscribe or follow button and leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast platform. Before you go as well, if you like this kind of content, please check out our Substack, which you can find through our website, studyofstrange.com, in the support tab. From there, you can get access to articles and exclusive audio content for the subscribers to our Substack, and it's all only $5 a month. Thank you so much for listening to the show, and good night.